Hello, everyone. We have a great treat in store for you today. We have with us a great friend of United Women in Faith and Mountain View United Methodist Church, Reba Winsinger. And she's going to talk to us about a trip she took last year to Italy where she met with some Ukrainian orphans. Reva, how did you happen to go to Italy? Sure, I'd love to answer that. So I have a dear friend who has been trying to adopt a little girl from Ukraine for about two years. They were about a month and a half away from bringing her home to the United States uh, when the conflict broke out. And so because the orphanage was so close to the front lines, the orphanage was evacuated. And so they ended up in Italy um, it was really, really, it was a God thing um, because the uh, Italian government had actually requested that some orphans be sent because they had a particular tiny town way up in the mountains that most of the people in the village speak Russian. Um, and it, this orphanage being close to the Russian border, a lot of the, most of the children speak Russian in, in there, not Ukrainian. And so it was just a really good fit um, for uh, about almost 100 children, 98 children, uh, were sent uh, by bus uh, from the Ukraine for their safety um, into this little village in Italy. So, um, but how I found out about it was that my friend, um, wanting to adopt her little, this precious little girl, um, she was planning on making a trip to Italy to be able to see her, help her, spend time with her and the others in the orphanage. And um, her husband had gone with her in, in the past and he was not able to go. And she was kind of anxious about making the trip on her own. And um, so I was at an event and bumped into her and she was asking me for some ideas and things that she could do with the children while she was there. She knows that I love to sew and love to craft. And that's some of the things that she wanted to do with, with the children while she was there. And so she said, she said just playfully to me, would you like to come with me? And I was like, well, I'd love to go. When are you leaving? And she said, well, I'm leaving in 12 days. And I was like, yep, nope, that's not going to happen. Not, not possible. Um, but God has a way of working things out to his honor and to his glory. And, you know, when we're willing in our heart to say yes when God calls, he can do the impossible. And that's exactly what happened with me. It was, uh, it was an, amazing, an amazing experience. Um, do I have time to, to yes. share the story? I, I understand you had a few glitches along yes, the way. Yes, definitely, with definitely. Cleared to go. <laughs> well, tell us about that. Sure. So she playfully had asked me, can you go? And I was just like, oh, well, I'd love to, but timing is just not going to work. Um, I have two children. How am I, you know, I want to get care for them. It's just too quick. Um, and so um, then the next day, she, uh, she and her husband had prayed about, you know, like who could go and who could help, you know, with this, with this project. And they just kept, I just kept coming to mind. And so they called and said, would you prayerfully consider going? And I was like, I just don't see how this is possible. Um, and then I happened to remember looking at my passport and it was expired. And I was like, well, that's that end of story. And um, they said, well, you should maybe look into getting it expedited. That might, that might be possible. So my husband and I prayed about it and just kept, really kept feeling like you should go, you should go. And uh, my husband said, if we can find care for the children and if we can work out this, you know, insurmountable passport task, I think you should go, which for my husband to say that is definitely a God thing too. So he likes me at home. But, <laughs> but we... Um, so we called his mom and we said, could you come watch the kids? She's in Nashville. She said, oh, sure, I'll fly out and, and take care of the kids. So that was one item off the checklist. And then um, I called the passport office first thing Monday morning. And they said, we can get you in on Wednesday, but that means you won't get your passport back until the following Wednesday. And I would be leaving on that Thursday. So I was like, oh, that is really cutting it close. Um, so we prayed about it some more and went ahead and bought a ticket because you have to show you have a legitimate need for a rush passport. So I bought a ticket on Monday and um, took the appointment and went in Wednesday morning to get my passport. And another just amazing God moment happened because um, when I went in and had all my paperwork and why I was going and everything like that, and the lady looks up at me and she's like, why are you going on this trip? And I told her I'm going to help a group of Ukrainian orphans 
and this is a federal worker. And she started to cry. And she said, I think we all want to help those precious kids. She's like, can you come back tomorrow? I'm the one doing your paperwork. I'm going to have this done for you tomorrow. Oh and so God. I got up my passport back in less than 24 hours. And it was just another stamp of saying, like, God saying, yes, I want you to go. And so I was able to communicate to a few friends and family, um, those here at the, uh, the church, uh, were able to hear about my trip, and um, God just miraculously provided all the funds that I needed, not only for the trip, but also to be able to to bring supplies, some fun things for the kids, and then also um, some funds as well, because we were going into, that was back in September of last year, and so we were going into the fall season, so the kids were needing some warmer clothing, and so I was able to bring funds Wonderful. for that as well. So, Wonderful. Yeah. Then when you got there, mm -hmm. did you meet the children immediately, or was your friend already there? No, we, we traveled together, and so when we arrived, um, you know, it's 20 some odd hours of traveling, so we were, you know, very travel weary, but um, she happened to uh, look out the window of the little house that we were staying in that was kind of on the main street in this little town, and there were three little girls walking by, and one of them was the little girl that she was planning to adopt, and so she rushed out, and they were able to, to hug and because they hadn't seen each other in many months. So it was a really precious reunion to get to see that. And then um, the little girls were going to the little market to buy some treats. And then they walked back by to the park and we joined them. We went to the park and saw a lot of the children from the orphanage in this big, beautiful park and got to spend some time with them that evening. Um, so it was really, it was really special, special to see. Where were the children staying? Um, they were staying in a, they had been staying like in a, in a hotel, and shortly before we arrived, they had actually been relocated to an unused monastery that was in the area um, that was a little bit bigger and um, a little bit more protected for them, um, just for their safekeeping, um, kind of a, with a gate and things like that to kind of keep people from go, coming and going at will. So it was just a little bit more protected for them and bigger rooms. Um, so and that and that's actually where they still are right now um, so that they just have a, a safe good place the Italian people love them they want them there um, they've integrated them into all of their public schools and um, it has really really worked out very well um, to be able to especially to have them be able to speak the same language so they're but they are still learning Italian too so it's a it's a lot oh, it's a lot that's yeah a lot. and learning yes. English so they're they're, yes. they're being kept very, very busy. So the main reason that people are able to go and visit is pe uh, prospective adoptive parents. Um, about, I believe my friend said about 60 of the children that are there um, have current US adoption plans in place um, mm -hmm. for them to be adopted from this particular orphanage. And so um, parents are able to come and spend a week, two weeks, um, not only visiting with their child but also are able to bring crafts and activities to do with the kids after school help them with their homework um, help them with their english lessons and then just provide just some activities and snacks and things mm -hmm. just so that they just feel comfortable feel at home um, and at peace how long were you there, Reba, and what did you do with the children? Right, I was there for about two weeks, a little over two weeks, and um, so our main activities that we were doing was after school activities, and so once the kids came home from school in the afternoon, we would sometimes meet in the park, or sometimes like in a church basement, um, or at a gym, just to be able to provide them with some activities and things, help them with their homework, um, and do a little bit with English lessons with um, especially the younger children. So this particular orphanage had children as young as eight up all the way up to 18. And so we got to work mostly with the like eight to 14 year olds with what I would say the ones that kind of came the most they wanted to do activities and do crafts and play soccer and just be involved. Um, a lot of the older kids do have phones and things and just like here in the United States, they stay pretty busy on those though. So. Sure. I understand some of the children are now going back to Ukraine. 
um, explain that situation. Sure, no, definitely. And that's something that actually has happened very, very recently, just as of two days ago, the filming of this video, the older children um, that were 15 and older actually uh, were put on a bus and taken back to the Ukraine. It was determined that they had been in Italy for a little over a year and a half. And while they could not go back to the um, to the specific area where they originated from, um, they're being kept in more central Ukraine now. Um, and but it was determined it was best for them to return, um, especially because a lot of the children in the year and a half that they were in Italy had you know turned 18 or turned 16, and depending on how the laws and everything work, um, kind of aged out of being in an orphanage. So they're returning home to go to into different types of work programs um, so that they can be a little bit more self-sufficient um, once they once they return. So th the children were very excited. There was there was a lot of um, a lot of emotion um, from what I understand in the children returning. They are very proud of their country. They love their country and so um, just so happy, proud to be home again. So um, and the little ones are still in Italy, the kind of 14 and younger are still there, um, but they do anticipate sometime within the next two weeks to a month that they will also be bused back um, with their caretakers and everything, be bused back to Ukraine as well. Is there a way for people here to get involved? Oh, definitely. <laughs> and how, definitely. Would, how would that work? Sure, well, one of the organization that <laughs> I was working through is called Host Orphans Worldwide. Uh, H O W, and so if if you look for hostorphansworldwide.org um, on your computer, you can definitely um, donate financially. Um, and then, if anybody's interested in doing things more on a personal basis, I can give you contact information for that as well. But the biggest needs, like literally, like today, would be for um, for the littles that are still there to be able to have luggage. Um, a lot of them need new shoes, um, and um, for those that are, we still have adoptive parents going over, and so we can get that those funds directly to them to be able to provide for the immediate needs that they have. Well, thank you so much You're so for welcome. your time. Thanks so much. We've for enjoyed listening to this wonderful pr program that they had in Italy, and uh, thanks, Reba, for thank being you. with us. Thanks for today. having me. Appreciate it.